Hi, Chris Maholka here. Today we're going to tie my Angora leech, which is one of my favorite patterns for spring to up till midsummer fishing in lakes. Fish it on a slow sinking line and strip it slowly along the bottom and the fish love it. Today we're tying the black and purple version, which is my go-to fly for lakes. So let's get it started. I like to tie this pattern on size 8s and 10s for most of my fishing. A little bit larger in the spring, a little bit smaller in the summer. And we're going to start with an 8 here. And this is any heavy streamer hook because you want it to go down to the bottom. We don't weight it because you don't want to sink down into the muck and the weeds in the bottom. You want to stay right above it. So an intermediate sinking line in this fly, and a fairly short leader, a 5x leader, We'll get you down to where the fish like it. So we're going to go right back to about to the barb of the hook. Let the thread hang down. And first thing we want in here is a marabou tail. So on this, I'm going to use some black marabou. I just pulled out a blood quill and I'm going to just take and smooth it out. Pull it in my fingers until I get out to where I'm almost to the tip. So everything is nicely aligned. Then I like to cut the marabou off before I tie it in. Now, when you go to go over the marabou, you want your thread to go back toward your fingers. You don't want it to go away from it. If it's not, if it's spinning or if it's looping this way when you're trying to tie it in, if you take your bobbin and you spin it counterclockwise, it makes the thread bend toward your fingers and go up over the material. So you can make a couple loops over it and pull straight down. And the reason you do this is it keeps it straight down the back of the shank. It doesn't allow the marabou to roll around the shank of the hook. That way it stays nice and square on the back of the hook. Nice and parallel to the back of the hook actually. Next to the marabou I'm going to add oh, three or four pieces of purple crystal flash. And what I normally do is lay it on the far side away from me. Make a couple wraps over it to hold it in place. On the far side and then bring the rest of it around to the near side and wrap over it. And that gives us some on both sides. And then clip it equal to the length of the tail. That gives us matching stripes on both sides of purple and it leaves us enough crystal flash to do a second fly out of those four strips. So now we've got our tail and our crystal flash in. So now we're going to make sure that our body is nice covered with thread the, the shank of the hook then I'm going to do my dubbing loop and if you're not familiar with dubbing loops I do have a dubbing loop video you can watch show you how to do this so the first one just going to wrap over it to the back to right where the wraps over the marabou and the crystal flash are leave myself a nice long loop there and I'm going to set that one aside just kind of hook it over something on the back of the vise and then we do a second one and this is important to the construction of the fly. It's made with two dubbing loops and that's all. So here's the second dubbing loop. So I've got one up here on the vise. The second one I'll just lay it back up there also. And I'm going to run my thread clear back up to the front of the hook. A little coating on the front of the hook and set that aside. Now I'm going to use, this is an Angora that I dye and uh, sell. You can find it on my eBay page, Fly Tie Stuff, F L Y T I E S T U F. Only one F on Fly Tie Stuff. I sell leaders and Angora and different materials. So I'm going to use the black red blend. And these are, I sell them in four by six bags, so you have plenty of material to tie lots of patterns with. And this is a blend of black and red Angora. You can kind of see the red and it just seems to add some some blood and life and uh, color to the fly that uh, it seems to work far better when it's mixed black and red. So that's one of my standard colors. And I'm going to take this and fluff it out, put it in my hand. I'm going to roll it between my fingers or between the palms of my hand rather and make my dubby noodle. Rather long dubby noodle, but it's a big fly. So I'm going to put that in 
Started with my first dubbing loop. Running up tight against the fly. And then the back end, I'm going to catch back here in the back of the dubbing loop. And I'm starting to twist it. And what I do on this fly, the reason I did two dubbing loops is this first one is going to be the main body color of the fly. So it needs to be a thin, long one. I'm going to make a wrap or two so I don't break the thread up close to the fly there. And keep wrapping until I get it into the kind of the rope shape I want. About like that. And I'm just twisting and twisting with my hackle pliers. So I'm going to just start and go over. Keep sure the tail stays in place there. This one's way too long for this fly, but that's fine. I can just cut it off at the front end. So I'm just wrapping to get it smooth. I'm spacing the, the, the small parts. I space them closer together, and then when it gets fatter, I go farther apart. So I get a smooth, even body. That's part of the dubbing loop process. Again, check out the dubbing loop video if you haven't ever worked with them before. Then I'm just going to clip off the excess, make sure I don't get my thread. So that's one dubbing loop. Now I've got my black and red body on the fly. I'm going to put a little half hitch in there so it doesn't come apart on me. Set my thread off to the side, just down on the table. Set it down on there so it goes out so it gives me room to work. Now I've got my second dubbing loop. Now this one is going to give the halo effect and kind of a glow around the fly. So I'm going to use my Angora Purple for this one. And instead of doing a noodle like I did on that last part, I'm just going to fluff this one out because I want this one to form a halo effect over the fly. Give it kind of a purplish glow. And purple seems to add life to a fly. A lot of saltwater flies have purple in them because when fish are looking down or fish are down below that fly looking up like at a herring or an anchovy, pinks and purples are what they see. So the glow of this fly down deep, I think the purple color just adds more life to it. So I've got right now uh, just a fluffed out bunch of dubbing. It's actually, you can look right through my fingers there, but it's actually pretty even all the way. And I want this fatter part to be at the front of the fly because I kind of want it to taper from thin to flat. So I'm going to flip it over. Just stick that in the dubbing loop. Try to catch it all there. And one piece wants to not cooperate. There we go. So once again, squeeze the loop together. Start twisting. If I get big globs like that one, I can just get it out of there now before I get too much wrapping done or too much twisting done. Grab it with my hackle pliers and continue the twist. And make a couple wraps there just to get rid of some of that bare thread that was up close to the hook so I didn't break the thread there before I even got a chance to start wrapping. And I'm just kind of spreading this out, fluffing it out a little bit. So when I wrap, it'll form a basic, almost like a, a purple uh, hackle, only it's a lot finer material than like a hackle feather would be. So I'm just making my wraps. I'm making sure I pull it back. So as I go around, I don't wrap over it and mat it down. And this last little bit here where it's thicker, I kind of want it to be like a, a kind of a front hackle. So I kind of push it in together there. So when I get close to the front, I can make that last wrap, wrap and a half, right up behind the eye of the hook. Run my thread up a little bit here, right behind the my dubbing loop, a couple behind it, a couple in front of it, and get rid of that dubbing loop thread. I'm just going to pull the material back, a couple wraps, and some thread, and then a little drop of whatever your favorite head cement might be on it. And you can see that purple isn't going to come out, but once it gets roughed up, it forms a really nice halo 
If I put a light down behind it, you can see the glow of it. You get the dark body, the black body with a little bit of red in it, and all that purple glow around it looks lively, and then everything moves when it's down in the water and you're stripping it along the bottom. So that's one of my, is my favorite lake pattern. It's the first one I use in the spring when I hit a lake to see what's going on, and if the fish are hungry, they will usually eat it. So give it a try. I also tie it in a blood red, which I have also dubbing for, and uh, kind of a uh, chocolate brown, which seems to be the other version. Uh, rainbows tend to like the black and the purple. Um, brown trout tend to like the red one, the maroon one. And uh, brook trout tend to like the brown one, strangely enough. So that's why I carry it three different colors. Make sure when you get out on the water in the spring, you have a few of these with you. Trust me, they're a very good pattern. And hey, I'm a fly fisherman. Would I tell a story? Enjoy tying them. Give them a shot. Thanks for watching.